It says, bought this along with a pile of other items from a friend who had cleaned out a house. I paid a hundred for the pile. So I'm probably into this for two to four dollars. There was one sold online, but no others. So I took a chance and put it up for auction. It was really cool and interactive. So I made sure to load a video. I was really hoping for a bidding war, was happy with $108.50. So hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, you guys, these Bolos are going to blow you away. They are incredible. Um, I've got them pulled up on my phone, all of the information. I am going to feature one of my members right here. Isn't it beautiful? Abigail's Artful Abode. And her channel is so different from mine, but I believe that you guys are going to absolutely love it. She is a bolo finder. She is just amazing. She does like artsy stuff and she sources way different than me. Um, breakables, unique, different items. Just wait until you see these what solds. She is incredible. So please go and subscribe to her. I will link her down below in the description. Again, this is her YouTube channel. It will be down there and so will her eBay store. Right here is her eBay store. Now, I know I push, push, push for a white background and that's what I personally like. But I will say that I feel like she is an artist with her backgrounds. Um, some of them are just incredible. They remind me more of like Etsy or, you know, that type of platform. Just really, really pretty backgrounds. Her pictures are always amazing. And I just enjoy looking through her store to look at her pictures because I just think they're great. But anyway, you can check that out. Ooh, that looks like that little bear that I sold. I sold a bear that was jointed and mohair, but it was uh, mechanical and woo, it was a big money bolo. I pulled that one out of a mystery box. If you guys have watched my channel for a while, you've probably seen that one. Now, if you want to save her as a seller, you can click this little heart. Um, and if she does coupons or anything like that, uh, she may send out coupons to her followers or you can just get updates when she lists new items. So definitely think about doing that. And let's start with her first bolo item. That's not it. Here we go. All right. So it is a pair of these um, Bernhardt design accent chairs. Now they are pretty incredible. I don't mess around much with big stuff. I believe she also has a storefront shop. And um, so these may have been sitting there, but they ended up selling on eBay. So she did give some information on this. I don't think it went quite as she had planned. Um, she said, I bought these on Facebook Marketplace and paid up for them 300 and thought that they would sell right away, but they sat in my store for over a year. We marked them down, then thought about putting them on eBay. They sold within a couple of months for a best offer of 800 We use U-Ship, and because they had to go to Baltimore, Maryland, it, the shipping wound up being $660. I didn't coach my employee well enough because shipping on U-Ship is like an auction and it can take weeks to coordinate with a shipper. Luckily, we found a shipper, but it did take us three weeks. Okay, so it looks like my shipping to me would be $400. So I don't know what the buyer actually paid for the shipping and how much they ended up having an overage for shipping. But that is definitely something to consider when you're selling furniture. I know a lot of people in my Facebook group talk about wanting to sell Ethan Allen furniture and stuff like that. So definitely do your homework on U-Ship. I know it's a great thing. I personally have never used it. I don't want to store big things and I don't want to mess with shipping them, but it is possible to make money doing that. Okay, this is the only item she has like this. So we are going to move on here to what I just think is incredible. These are uh, Radco, Christopher Radco. If you guys don't know about Christopher Radco, Oh my goodness, he has incredible ornaments and they range in price from bread and butter to big money. And some of them can just go for really, really big money. So let me see, there's a little tag on the top. That's something that you can be on the lookout for. But she said, I picked a ton of Christopher Radko at an estate sale when everything was 50% off. So she paid seven to 20 for each piece. They were all vintage Radko from before he sold the company. This one was very large and I decided to put it up for auction 
with what I thought was a high, buy it now, of $235. Someone bought it within an hour. Okay, so it sounds like she auctioned it with a buy it now. The buy it now was $235 and it sold within an hour. So if she would have just did an auction without a buy it now, ooh, I wonder how high it would went um would have went. Does anybody know anything about this Christopher Radko ornament? Would it have gone higher? Oh my goodness, the suspense, right? Okay, here's another Radko. Look how beautiful they are. They've got all the glitter. Here's your little uh Radko uh, emblem or logo. <laughs> you always take the picture and then you get to see yourself in the picture. That's fun, right? There it is. All right. And then she's got this at the end of every picture, which is pretty uh, a pretty good advertising idea. So um, let's go ahead and see what she wrote about this one. She said, same situation here, paid 20 each, but put them on auction with a buy it now of 245 and the same person bought them. So I believe they bought this one and this one. So somebody is a major collector for sure. Um, here's another one, same, and we're gonna get out of the Radcos, I promise you, but I just thought these were so fantastic. Um, same buy as above, sold within a week for full asking price of $85. These are a little bit different. These are shaped like uh, doves and they've got the little dangle heart down below, really, really cute. Um, but again, these are the older ones. They're vintage. They're harder to find. They're not broken. Um, they're in great condition. So one more Radco for you guys. This one right here is like a two-tiered. Um, it's got the indent, which is another thing to look for. That's a great thing to look for in other types of ornaments as well. But these are glass. So really, really fantastic. A little elf um, two-tier here. And she said, same buy as above, sold within a week for full asking price. This one went to Canada and I could not find any comps for it. It um, it could very well have been more valuable, but I was still happy with the sale. The buyer identified it as an excellent ornament. <laughs> so anytime I can't find comps, I always do an auction and I start that auction at the highest or at a higher price. So in this case, if she had to buy it now of $78, I would have started my auction at $78 just to see where it would go if I could not find any comparables on eBay solds, Terra Peak, and lastly, WorthPoint. Um, I absolutely love WorthPoint for hard to find items. I use it um, for my business. It took me a long time to get it because it is a little bit pricey, but it is definitely worth it. And I have definitely made more money because I use that. Um, I do have a link down below if you guys wanna check out WorthPoint. Um, it is a referral link, and I do have videos that show you how WorthPoint has helped me in my business. So definitely check that out. This one kind of caught me off guard because I've never heard of Buyer's Choice. Um, it's Buyer's Choice Traditions Lighted haunted, haunted Halloween Gingerbread House. Let's see if I can get you guys. I don't know if it shows what the bottom looks like or not. It says a few gumdrops are missing. It actually looks like somebody really used gumdrops, right? Doesn't the candy look real? Oh, she's got a video here. Are you guys using the video feature? Let me, um, let's see. So she's going to go into detail and show all of the, show it all lit up, which is a smart idea. So Definitely take advantage of that. I'm still adding mine down into the description of the video. So um, that's how my preference. Let's see. So let's see what she wrote. This was an unexpected bolo. I had decided to make a late stop at Value Village and noticed a family looking at this haunted gingerbread house. They finally walked away and I sauntered over and took out my phone to try Google Lens. Imagine my surprise when I found out the comps. It was missing some gumdrops and did not have the original box, but it still sold for a full asking price of $163. I had to make sure that to upload a video of how the lights flashed. Funny thing is, it had its original home goods sticker. It had uh, clearance at $12.99. <laughs> so this was from home goods. That's incredible. And she paid $7.99 for it. The next item are these 1940s pennant canvas um, 
signal nautical racing flags. And she got these for a dollar a piece at a garage sale and knew they were good, but not how good. She said, I listed them at $175 and took a best offer of $130. The next item here, um, you may have seen in another video, I have featured this one in a past featured members video, but it is incredible. It's a vintage hexagon art deco, modern silver plated water drinks, pitcher, geometric design. She said, I had this picture in my hallway where I store listed items for at least two years. And every once in a while, I will work on cleaning it and not with not much luck. I recently ordered Wright's Silver Polish and finally made enough progress for me to list it. I couldn't find anything like it at all. So took Courtney's advice and did an auction. It was the best thing since it sold for $282. My cost was at most $5 and it was a while ago, but I think I bought it as part of a bundle um, from a picking friend. So look how beautiful it is. So she did clean it up. I know there's different opinion. Whoa. If it looked like the inside, whoo, it was probably black. Um, I know there's different opinions about cleaning, uh, sterling, uh, silver and silver plated items. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys do? Do you, uh, clean your silver or sell it as is? The next item are these uh, Doc Martens. And she said, if I can pick up Docs for a good price and good condition, I do. But these were amazing. She said she bought them on Facebook Marketplace along with four others, some like these that had never been worn. Someone whose sister works for Docs was offloading them, picked up all five for $100. So her cost of goods was 20 and they sold for full asking price of $220. She said, we'd had several offers, but knew the right buyer would come along and pay full price. So these are printed with this fun little uh, flower print. Yeah, Doc Martens are definitely a bolo, even the ones that are pre-owned. She said, okay, this is a vintage cream white silk and lace Christian Dior nightgown. After watching a bolo video, I was dreaming of finding Christian Dior nightgown. Not even a month later, I found one for $3 at a garage sale. I was so excited. I listed it at 115 and took a best offer of 85. So definitely vintage nightgowns can do really well. Look at that beautiful lace. It's got some really nice detail there. Very pretty. Okay. The next item is interesting. It's an antique Victorian 1800s quadruple silver plate dog with bone toothpick holder. Look at him. He's He's different, right? Look at this. I think I would have picked this up. It's very, very cool. She said, I love this little toothpick holder and I had it priced high based on comps. I did have it listed for about a year, but it finally sold for full asking price of $154. I picked it up at a garage sale for $3 and was so happy that I could actually find comps on it. Yeah, no kidding. Some things it's like so hard to find comps. Here is a oh, Jim and Hard. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. It's a flute. It's for a beginner. And she said she went to a neighborhood garage sale and noticed this very nice flute. I didn't get a chance to look at solds, but I did quickly see there were some listed on different sites from 80 to 160. They wanted 20 and I offered them 10. Really thought I'd sit on it since there were so many listed, but it sold within the month for full asking price of $135. So sometimes just good pictures and lots of detail. Um, Maybe it was something specific right here, the writing on this that stood out to somebody that made them buy it. You just really never know what people are looking for. But I know what she's saying. Like sometimes I'm like, I can't believe mine sold. There were so many listed. This is a Plymouth Builds Great Cars. It's a dealer album book. And um, it says pictorial. So let's look here at the cool pictures on the inside. So yeah, some car collector is eating this up right here. How cool is that? Um, it says, bought this along with a pile of other items from a friend who had cleaned out a house. I paid a hundred for the pile. So I'm probably into this for two to $4. There was one sold online, but no others. So I took a chance and put it up for auction. It was really cool and interactive. So I made sure to load a video. I was really hoping for a bidding war, was happy with $108.50. So she went ahead and did a video on this book, which is a great idea as well. 
All right, this thing right here is something. It's a CMF Spinal Logic Unit Bone Growth Simulator with case. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Um, I picked this one up online auction for a total of 15 and was almost regretting buying it, so was pleasantly surprised when it sold within a few weeks for $90. What was great is that with an online auction, you have time to research the items in advance before bidding. So yeah, never seen one of those before. Huh. Spinalogic. All right. Dimension Sweet Dreams. Okay, so typically the gold collection are big money, especially the stockings. I'm actually surprised this didn't go for more, but here's what she said. I bought three of these Dimensions cross-stitch kits that were bundled together at Goodwill and priced at $9.99 for all three. This one wasn't vintage, so I stuck with the comps and sold it for full asking price of $37. So her comparable showed the $30 range, which is shocking to me because gold collection, some of those can go for $100, $200, so definitely look those up. Now, I think this was the other one she got. And this one is, uh, I listed it for 74, took a best offer of 65, took about three months to sell. She said the third was purchased, then canceled, but she ended up selling that one on Etsy. Now, I talked about this in another video when I featured it. Do you see how it says baby right here? That's really just on there with marker. If you take a dry erase marker and go over that and then wipe it with a paper towel or a rag, that will come right off. So um, just so you guys know, that's definitely something that I do all the time on plastic toys and different things um, that have marker on them, a dry erase marker right over it. And then while it's still wet, just wipe it off real quick. This here is a vintage grandmother's flower garden quilt. It is feed sack. And she said, I picked this up at a vintage market along with a ton of other awesome textiles for $10. And uh, she listed it on eBay for $185 and took a best offer of $155. Yeah, these vintage quilts can definitely be big money. They are just incredibly made. And um, people want them. I actually bought three, um, no, wait, two to sell. And my husband and I decided to keep them. <laughs> so we're using them. Vintage 1940s squares, pastel, pink and white embroidered Noah's Ark. Um, and this is another quilt. Super, super cute. Um, oh my goodness, it's so cute. And it's just the quilt topper. So it still needs like the, I don't know what you call it, this batting or whatever in the back. So this is just the topper. She said this one was listed for $175 and I took a best offer of $129. Same seller at the vintage market. Honestly, her prices were cheaper than a garage sale. That's incredible. She said, I have made so much money from that particular pickup and that seller was thrilled that I made her whole goal within the first hour at the market. Rare, four cards. Um, these are Harvard, Penn, and Yale, Princeton basketball cards. I think they're like um, postcards. If I remember quick, correctly, let's see. I don't know. Maybe not. This is the back. So let's see what she wrote. I went to an estate sale. They are incredible. In Savannah last October. And one of the items I grabbed was an antique photo album full of hundreds of postcards. I actually sat on the pile till just recently. At first, I was just going to take these to my store but I decided to list them on eBay at 175 and the buyer went back and forth with offers until we settled on $145. Postcards really aren't my thing, but I can't believe I ever considered not listing them. Yeah, I do that a lot too. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to sit that over in my money pile because I'm really not comfortable with this. And, you know, it's not something I sell all the time. This is probably kind of the same situation here. Lot, 1,000 plus vintage 1940s and 50s hunting military skiing camping negatives so this is what it looks like what would you guys have done would you have parted this out or sold it as a lot do you think a reseller was buying it let me know in the comments i think i would have did an auction on that she said this is another item that is not in my genre Pick these up for $3 and had them for at least two years until I listed them. Of course, there were no comps, so I took the best pictures I could of the negatives and threw what I thought was a high price of 135 
They weren't even up a week before someone bought them at full asking price. Yeah, I definitely would have done an auction. You know, things that you're just not sure about. Um, there's people that collect these things and resellers that really um, specialize in things like this. And they will part these things out and make a ton of money. They were probably just thrilled to get this lot. Vintage pastel, home sweet home, Claire Murray hand hooked wool rug. So this is what it looks like. Wow. I can't say that I would have even thought anything of this rug. Like what on earth would you guys have picked up this rug? Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's see what she wrote. I was at a private estate pick by invitation. I hauled off so much stuff, including a huge box. Oh wait, is this the right one? Yeah. Okay. Um, a huge box of jewelry with loads of silver. This was one of three rugs I picked up, all sold within a month or two, and they were very easy to identify as Claire Murray. I'd say I'm into these rugs $2, and they both sold for full asking of $110. I honestly wasn't even interested in going based on the pictures they sent me, but I'm so glad I did. Yeah, I, I would have, like, I would not have picked up this rug. <laughs> I, I just don't get it. I'm so confused. Anyway, let me know if you guys know anything about that in the comments. All right. This one right here is a Art Deco signed modernist large red coral sterling silver hair pick. It's beautiful. And let me get you some close ups here. And she's got some other jewelry. Okay. So I have mixed feelings about this picture because I, if it were me looking, I'd be like, are these items included or are they not included? So be careful doing that because that could end up getting you a um, item not as described. Let's see. Um, I don't know if maybe she wrote down here something. Uh, uh, there's other people I've seen that do that. They'll, their last picture is other items that are listed in their store. Um, maybe they just disclose it, but just be careful with that because some people will use that against you. She said that listed at 145 and took a best offer of 115 and I'm not sure where she got it or what she paid for it. Let's keep going here because there's quite a few little jewelry pieces here. Handmade Native American Navajo turquoise sterling silver hairpin barrette. It's beautiful. Um, very, very nice piece. This one was listed for 145, took a best offer of 90. And then we have this one right here, which is another, um, hair piece and it's got the, um, Eagle on it and that same picture there. So she's obviously showcasing other items that she has listed to draw people into her store to look around. Um, and this one, she said, Sold for full asking price of 95. Did I miss one here? I don't think so. All right. She said those were the same private estate pick. There was a huge box of what I thought was costume jewelry. The family had already taken everything they wanted. So I could thought I could sell the costume pieces at my store. The box was heavy, maybe 25 pounds. When I got home, I was shocked to find out that there were piles and piles of silver. I listed what I thought was the most valuable ones. And these were some of them. I'm probably into each piece one to two dollars. All right, that's incredible. Pair of two Garnet Hill white French style, uh, they're bedspreads or coverlets. Okay. She said these were part of an estate pickup, took them off the bed since they were going to be donated, listed them at 105 and took a best offer of 80. Maya Moon handmade green calf hair alligator print leather bucket purse. Check that out. Look at it. Would you look at it? That is incredible. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Um, she said part, oh no wait, I'm sorry. I think this purse is gorgeous. It was a new condition and very unusual, but it sat for over a year, maybe because of the price. I picked up at a charity garage sale for $5 and it sold for full asking price of 96. Um, I'm going to say that it probably took a while to sell um, because it's so camouflaged by the stuff around it. Um, this one, I think a white background would have really made it pop. I do think her picture is beautiful, but for selling and showcasing this purse in particular, I think a white background would have uh, 
made it sell quicker. I actually went to look for this to add it to the um, video. And I'm like, I can't find it. I had to type it in because my eyes were not picking up a purse. They were just seeing the stuff around it. So that could be, uh, maybe it wasn't showing up in Google search or something like that. Uh, rare vintage new 1950s dusky ballet pink satin peach chiffon fabric. Bought this beautiful new old stock at a garage sale for $4. It had been folded up and just put away. Still had the original store tags. She said she listed it at 78 and took a best offer of 58 and took about five months to sell. This here is a 75 inch antique rare French heavy linen extra long bolster pillow cover monogrammed. She said, I spent a month in France and hit up endless town and neighborhood garage sales and flea markets and totally fell in love with their beautiful vintage linen. I had to buy a gigantic suitcase to bring all my finds back, but have made a ton of money for my effort. This was one of those finds. I paid five or six US, listed it for 75 and took a best offer of $71. That is a huge pillowcase. Wow. Okay, these vintage oversized women's uh, sunglasses, Belicia, B-A-L-E-N-C-I-A-G-A. -A -A. I don't know what that, I don't even know how to say that. So I apologize, you guys. Um, she got these. Oh, oh, she's so sweet. Pronunciation, Balenciaga, Balenciaga, Balenciaga. <laughs> she like typed it out for me. It says Ba, B-A slash lens it's actually a dash e e dash a a a dash g a a <laughs> i love it you guys are awesome thanks for your help um okay i won't try to pronounce it again because i totally probably still messed it up even with her help she said i picked these up at an estate sale while visiting atlanta last year but they sat in my money pile till i finally listed them this summer i did pay up for them at 30 dollars i listed them in 95 and took a best offer of 81. They only took two months to sell once listed. And I love her, um, her, uh, model here. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, let's look at the next one. Vintage, large African folk art, outsider art, hand carved wood soldier. Let's see. This was part of the private estate pickup. So probably in him two to $5. The I did find similar ones listed in the mid range of 105 and took a best offer of $81. Took about a month to sell. I think the description and keywords really helped. I think it's incredible also. Um, I really uh, think folk art is amazing. Anything that is hand carved, I have been doing really, really well with. Um, I talked to you guys about some Santas. I've sold some driftwood. I mean, it is a work of art to carve and paint these items. And this one looks really, really old. So just look at the detail in that. That's just incredible. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Oh, wait, what'd she say it sold for? 81. The next item is this vintage boho or MCM Greek wool rectangular flocati rug. Here's what she wrote. These Greek shaggy wool rugs called flocati are a huge bolo. I've picked several after learning about them from another YouTuber who concentrates on mid-century modern. And I've sold every single one fairly fast. I paid 10 for this at a local garage sale in my town. I listed this one for 98 and took a best offer of 70. And I'm sorry she did not tell me who the YouTuber was. Um, I am completely fine with shouting out other channels. So um, she probably just wasn't sure if I was. But yes, definitely good with that. So if she wants to put down in the comments, if she watches this, who um, that YouTuber was, she is more than welcome to do that. Antique Italian oh, Petra Dura plaque. Framed pink and white lily. I spotted this at the Goodwill and noticed it was a marble type of material and that it had a little note on the back. Decided to pick it up since it was only $4.99. My employee Amanda actually listed it and I was, excuse me, I was surprised it sold within a month for the asking price of 75, even though it had condition issues and was only six inches tall. So it's just a little picture. How pretty is that? It's like delicate. All right. We have this small antique French Cupid painting on porcelain, gilded gold rose filigree brass. So uh, filigree brass is what this uh, frame is here. And this is the artwork. 
So really, really interesting, right? Pick this beautiful European painted porcelain little piece of art for $10 from a private pick. I think I may have priced it too low as it sold in less than a week for a best offer of $58, originally listed for $68. I love this one. Vintage white bunny rabbit needlepoint pillow with lavender background, but she also has a pig. These are cool, right? Um, check it out. I don't know what that is. What is that? Is it on this one? Let's look. Is it just showing? Maybe it's a little bit dusty or something. I don't know, but these are cool. So these are needlepoint. If you guys don't know, um, these little needlepoint pillows can do pretty good. They can be a bolo. She said both of these were from the estate private pick. Super well made in the 80s. They had all the cottage core vibes. Again, probably into them two to four, and they each sold for 54 each. I like picking up needlepoint and cru cruel uh, pillows. I always wanted to say cruel, and somebody's like, it's cruel, like you're cruel. I'm like, okay. Sometimes they're bread and butter, and sometimes they're a bolo. So a pig and a rabbit. This rare 1999 vintage um, Kush Odd Zone Purple vo Vortex Power Strike Nerf works. She said, I was so excited to pick up this Nerf gun from the 90s at a garage sale for $3. Not usually my area, but I was trying to step out of my comfort zone. I listed it the same day and it sold within two hours. Full asking price of $48.99. I was so excited since I know, know only what I've learned from your channel. It paid off handsomely. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so she's not into toys and I'm not into breakables, but she's branching out and I try to branch out. Um when I find really cool stuff. I picked up these uh, cats the other day and I was so excited about them because it was a breakable item and they kind of have that really, uh, I forget what that word is. It starts with an A or a K and um, it's really popular right now. And I'm like, oh my goodness, these are gonna sell so good. And I pulled it out of the bag and I looked it over and one of the tails was broken off. I'm like, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we'll just stick to toys. I love this one. It's a vintage 1950s penguin point restaurant plush stuffed animal rubber face and feet. I picked this guy up at my little honey hole of a thrift store for $5. He had a little note attached saying he went or he was from penguin point. I found out that was a restaurant chain and it is still in business. I put him up for auction with a starting price of $66. It only got one bid, but that's all I needed. Interestingly enough, he is going to someone in the same town my store is in about an hour away. I wonder if it was reunited with its original owner. The next item is this vintage Royale Albert Old Country Roses Cup and Saucer 25th anniversary. This is what the bottom looks like. Another thing I kind of stay away from and should look at. She said, I learned about Royal Albert from watching the Nurse Flipper. Yeah, uh, the Nurse Flipper did a whole um, video on, a category video on uh, teacups. She said, I was so excited when I spotted this one at an estate sale for $8. I checked listings super quick and saw one for $500. When I got home, I realized the seller was off her rocker, but I was still thrilled to sell it for $60. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking at actives, sometimes people really just price things high. She's okay. So these are vintage Edwin Blyde pair of traditional Scottish drinking cup horn pewter. I picked these cool, what I thought were candle holders up at a neighborhood wide garage sale for $5 each. Come to find out they were traditional Scottish drinking cups. The owner said she got them at a wedding as a wedding present. So that makes total sense. Sold for full asking price of $70. All right, you guys, again, these come from Abby, Abigail's Artful Abode. Please go subscribe to her channel. She is incredible. You're going to love her style of video. Um, she's just great. And again, go and save her as a seller so that you can get updates when she lists new things. And if you are in the area, you should definitely go check out her store. I think it's got the address right here, maybe downtown, uh, I don't know, Pelosobo, Pelosobo, Washington. So that's where she's at. If anybody's in Washington, you can go and uh, check her out. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, Furniture, Clothing, Accessories, Vintage Decor. So that is her information. You got her email right there. 
and check out her store. And if you're local to the area, you can buy it on eBay and maybe do local pickup, right? And maybe find something in her store. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Her bolos were incredible. I was like, can I feature your store? Because you just sell amazing stuff. Items that I walk past. And I just wanted to share these with you guys. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.